Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. In last week's video I turned this multi-axis kind of interesting little shaped uh, ornament and to carry on in the the same sort of vein of multi-axis let's turn this one this week that actually uses much the same process as this one except that there's only six channels between uh, and then I did put finials on this one but then shape them to continue the flow between the two. So uh, Christmas ornament challenge is underway. Get your ornaments in. Uh, there's not uh, a lot of time left but there is time enough to finish one. So let's turn this one. You get your ornament in. This ornament starts life as a sphere. It is another great opportunity to use the octagon method at least to get started. I do not need a perfect sphere, but it helps to get started as close to spherical as possible. With the cylinder diameter at 2.75 inches, I can multiply pi 0.414 for each side of an octagon and by 0.273 for the distance from a corner of the cylinder to the corner of an octagon. After trimming the top of the cylinder, I can mark off the top side, the corners, and the bottom of the cylinder. I have a lot of excess wood near the headstock that I can waste away before carefully trimming the bottom of the cylinder. Then cut the 45 degree sides from mark to mark, then interrupt the octagon method to drill a quarter inch hole completely through the octagon. Then back to roughing out the sphere. That's all for the sphere for this ornament. While this is still attached to the chuck, I need to make equal divisions on the circumference. I am using the indexing on my chuck to mark six lines across the equator of the sphere. Then I can part off my sphere from the chuck. I usually use a dedicated cup faceplate, but since I have about enough waste material still attached to the chuck, this time I will shape it into a cup to hold the sphere. First with a spindle gouge, then finish up with a round nose scraper. I will still use a cup faceplate on my live center. Now for the first cut. The sphere is between the cups with the old axis now perpendicular to the new axis. I use a pencil to align the marks on each side. In addition, I need to align these marks with the center of a hole through the axis. It takes some fiddling, but it's worth it. This time I'm starting with a parting tool, thinking I can establish the depth up front and without a chance of slipping. I am marking the depth with, a ma with masking tape for the next time, then switch to a spindle gouge, and then switch to a round nose scraper to finish up. Then sand through all the grits. 
I will not get another chance to sand and to apply some shellac friction polish. Now for the second rotation. This is much the same, except that it is a lot harder to seat the sphere. Perhaps a larger cup center would work better since I do not need a lot of the sphere exposed for this ornament. The parting tool is more stable than a gouge with the interrupted cut as it crosses the first groove. Then on to cutting more. It turns out that my finger is a good gauge for the width of the groove. Then sand and finish again. Now the third rotation. A little harder to get it all aligned. It is a balancing act to get it into position. But much the same thing yet again. First the parting tool to establish depth. This time I use it to make the groove a little bit wider. Then directly to the round nose scraper to finish up. I think the parting tool helped to cross the uneven wood better as long as I left enough to refine with the scraper. and sand and finish this section. I took a few minutes to sand off any burns from the cup centers. Now for a finial. I have a piece of walnut that will become the bottom finial, but this will not be a traditional finial. I want it to mimic the shape of the central globe. So I'm working from the center out. First, I need a quarter inch tenon. It can be short, but needs to be long enough for my chuck jaws to grab. The space is tight. So my parting tool is my choice to cut this tiny tenon. Then some hollowing on the bottom side to offset the cove on the globe with my spindle gouge. Since my mount is stable, I am continuing to shape the finial. The finial will be simple since the globe is the feature. For finials, I usually use my skew as much as possible. Then sand and apply shellac friction polish to this side. Then switch chucks to be able to grab the small tenon. It does not take much to finish off the very end of the finial. Then sand and finish this piece. I like shellac since I can easily blend two previously finished areas. Now switch back to the other chuck to start working on the top finial. Essentially, my plan is the same, but shorter. This time, I cannot do a lot away from the center. There's not much wood there to work with. After my hollowing and just a bit of work, it is time to sand and finish this side. What now? What else? Swap chuck again to grab the small tenon. Then off again to finish this side of the top finial. One difference is to drill for the hanger. It is a tiny hole, one sixteenth of an inch. 
The wood is rounded. With a standard drill, the drill will wander around before it gets started. I'm borrowing from the machinists and starting with a stocky short drill to start the hole. Then swap to a standard drill to finish the hole. Then finish. After gluing the finials on and a wire hanger to the top, it is ready to go. This was another fun multi-axis turning inspired by the recent pumpkin, the faux sea urchin, and the plain ribbed globe ornament. With the deep grooves, it is a bit more dicey, to, but not too hard. There's still time for your ornament to join this year's ornament challenge. Tell your friends about the challenge. Please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe on my website and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I add a new wood turning video to my website. Always please wear your full face shield. That's for safety anytime the lathe is running. It is your last line of defense as it was mine. I will see you next week with another wood turning video.